Your answers and this video will help you, with your doctors, decide the difficult question that's probably on your mind. Is knee replacement surgery right for me? We've made the video in several sections, each of which you can watch whenever you like, or you may simply choose to watch right through. It's entirely your choice. The first section gives a simple reminder of what a knee replacement operation is. Next, in section two, we consider three related questions. When is it right to consider having the operation? What other measures should I take first? What about age, weight, or other health considerations? If you decide you seriously wish to consider the knee replacement option, we move on to section three, in which we pose and answer three more questions that patients usually ask. What are the typical benefits and problems of knee replacement? How much will I improve? How much will I change? Section 4 then explains the usual recovery process of patients after knee replacement. Our objective, once again, is that any decision you make should be based on realistic expectations. And finally, Section 5 provides you with a brief summary. We encourage you, if you're interested, to do further online research yourself and at the end of the video have included links to other websites that you may find helpful. So then, what exactly does knee replacement mean? This patient has had a normal active life. This knee joint is simply wearing out, so the bones here and here are beginning to rub together, causing quite a lot of pain and other problems. If necessary, we can replace this knee with an artificial knee joint. Clearly, that's going to involve some significant surgery, including removal of the cruciate ligaments here in order to put the new knee in. Without those ligaments, the knee will inevitably feel and behave differently with an artificial joint compared with the previous natural joint. We'll say more about that later, but before that, we need to consider some other questions. When is it right to consider having the operation? What other measures should I take first? What about age, weight or other health considerations? Clearly, knee replacement is quite a big operation. Before even thinking of going down that route, other treatment measures should be tried first. And these can help considerably in the management of knee pain. Most importantly, exercise should be a central part of your treatment plan, combining local muscle strengthening and general aerobic fitness. What about weight? Unfortunately, the heavier we are, the more load we're going to be putting on our joints. And part of the reason why you've got a problem with your knee may be that you are overweight. If so, although this is difficult to discuss in a short consultation with your GP or surgeon, it's very important to work out ways to reduce weight. This itself will help reduce your pain. And if you are considering knee replacement surgery, the operation will be safer and your knee replacement will last a lot longer if you successfully control your weight. There is strong evidence now that overweight patients who undergo knee replacement surgery will be less satisfied and have less improvement in their knee symptoms after their surgery. So, just to emphasize the point, if you are overweight, you really need to take time to explore the best ways to do this with your GP or practice nurse. Have you thought about using a walking aid? One obvious but often neglected answer to the problem of knee pain is simply to use a walking stick to take as much weight as possible off the affected knee. If you have an arthritic right knee, you hold the stick in your left hand, like this, to take the weight off the painful knee as you walk. Although this can be a difficult technique to get used to, it does definitely help reduce pain. Perhaps you could try using hiking poles if you are going on longer walks. Another area to look at is appropriate footwear or insoles which can include some shock absorbing properties. And in some cases, particularly for younger, active patients, 
the use of an offloader brace like this or other joint supports can be particularly helpful in reducing knee pain. Let us now turn to the medical management of knee pain. You need to have a thorough discussion with your GP about painkillers because lots of different prescription products are available now to help manage your pain. One important thing to say right away is to try to get over any reluctance you may have about taking medicines. All too often we hear people say, I don't like taking painkillers. I'm just not a pill taker. But the oral tablets available today really do work. Some of them are good for during the day, some for during the night. Possibly a small dose of a tablet that helps with sleep but also kills pain at night. You should start with simple paracetamol, taking it regularly and with the addition of a variety of topical gels to rub in can be very effective. Your GP can advise on this to make sure it fits with any other tablets you are on. Your GP may also consider anti-inflammatory tablets such as ibuprofen or naproxen but they would need to discuss possible risks associated with these tablets before you consider starting them. It's important to remember that all your medical treatments should be used in addition to the core treatments of exercise and weight loss that we've already mentioned. Special slow-release patches like these are available on prescription. They give you effective pain relief, usually with minimal side effects over a prolonged period of time. Over time, as the knee joint deteriorates, the stage may be reached when oral or patch treatments no longer adequately control the pain. In this case, there is the option of a steroid injection, which can normally be done by your GP in their surgery. A steroid injection can be very effective at relieving an acute flare-up of pain. Usually, the relief lasts about two to four months before the pain slowly comes back. We can do these injections up to three times a year with little risk. But if you have tried a steroid injection and it hasn't really helped, or it only helped for a short period of time, say a few weeks to a month, then we probably wouldn't repeat it. Also, it is not something we would like to do on a regular basis for someone who is young and active. But for patients who are relatively sedentary or frail, this is an ideal treatment to think about before surgery. So, just to re-emphasize the point, please talk to your GP and make sure you have seriously tried all these other treatment options before even thinking about the knee replacement route. And if you would like to do some further reading yourself, you'll find some helpful links listed at the end of this video. Age, weight and general state of health all need to be considered before deciding on surgery. The older you are, the better it is for us because we only want to do this operation once. It is possible to have a second or even a third knee replacement, but each time we do the surgery, it becomes more difficult and the results are less good. We want your knee replacement to last you, hopefully, forever. So ideally, we prefer patients to be over the age of 65. The average age for this surgery is 69 in the UK. As techniques improve, we're beginning to feel a bit more comfortable about patients as young as 50 if no other options are available. But only in exceptional circumstances would we even consider this form of treatment for anyone under the age of 50. However, other options may be possible for patients in this younger age group. One is osteotomy, where we surgically realign the knee to take the weight that it bears away from the damaged painful area. Another is partial knee replacement, where we remove only the small amount of bone and tissue that is actually damaged and replace just that part of your knee with a plastic and metal implant. The general state of health of any patient is always a factor when surgery is under consideration. If you are deciding on surgery, it is vitally important to make sure you are physically fit, not overweight, and also that any medical conditions are stable. So we recommend you see your GP to discuss this before any surgery. If you are in very poor general health, a knee replacement may not be possible. In this event, a steroid injection, as explained earlier, 
may be all we have to offer. So, you've tried the non-surgical measures we've just discussed, but still have significant problems and would now seriously like to consider the possibility of knee replacement. What are the typical benefits and problems of knee replacement surgery you need to know about? The questions that most patients typically like answers to are these. How much pain improvement can I expect? Will I be pain free? Will it feel like a normal knee? Will I be able to walk normally? over what sort of distances? Can I get back to playing sport? And what kind of sport? Will I be able to go up and down stairs without holding on? Will I be able to kneel? The answers, which we'll give in a moment, obviously depend very much on the individual patient. But we can give quite a helpful general idea about how successful any knee replacement is likely to be by showing what we call the happiness curve, based on questionnaires completed by patients on how satisfied they are with their knee surgery. This shows how satisfied patients will eventually feel about their knee replacement, from 0% completely unhappy up to 100% completely happy. We tend to get three very distinct groups. First, the very happy patients. Perhaps 20% of all patients who report they have had an excellent response to surgery. Then the majority, about 60 to 65% of patients who we might just call happy, who report a good or very good outcome. They are glad they've had their knee replaced. They would have the surgery again and would recommend it to a friend. But having said that, they're not 100% happy, perhaps because their knee clicks a bit, swells a bit, or feels a little stiff. They find it a struggle to bend and kneel. They'd like to be able to play their sports and be as active as they were prior to the surgery, but they can't. But the really important thing is their pain has dropped considerably from where they couldn't sleep at night or walk even short distances and now they can do those things. They still have some slight discomfort, but it's significantly better than it was. They can sleep through the night. They used to go up and down the stairs on all fours, literally because their knee was so stiff and painful. Now they can go up and down the stairs, but perhaps still have to hold on very slightly. And then we have to be aware of the unhappy group who reported their satisfaction as fair or poor and is probably between 10 and 15% of patients. There are some people who are much worse off than they were prior to the surgery being undertaken. In this group, about 2% of total patients will be those where significant medical problems have occurred. They may have an infection, a blood clot in the calf or their lungs, some sort of anaesthetic complication something wrong with the way the artificial knee is aligned. These problems can normally be resolved by doing further surgery, but unfortunately that still leaves about 10 to 12% of patients who have knee replacement surgery and then consider themselves to be no better or even worse off than before they started. So you really need to be in a position where your pain or other problems are bad enough that you would take that 10 to 12% risk of being no better or worse off following the surgery than you were before. If you literally can't walk anywhere, you're constantly in discomfort. You're having to use a stick to get around and your knee is severely restricting your life. Then this can be a great operation. And each year, we do about 100,000 knee replacements in this country. But you do have to be aware of the three distinct groups, and you must be prepared to accept the risk, as we've tried to explain, of falling into the unhappy or failure group. It's also helpful when talking about the chances of success and failure with knee replacement to mention hip replacement because this is completely different and you simply can't compare the two. With hip replacement, 
the percentage of patients in the very happy group goes up from 20% that we see with the knee replacement patients to as high as 90%. The reason for this big difference is because replacing a hip is a much more straightforward thing to do compared with a knee. It's important for you to be aware of this. Next, let's focus on the outcomes following knee replacement surgery that you are probably thinking about. How much will I improve? How much will I change? Let's talk first about pain, because that is the single most important reason for undertaking a total knee replacement. As the knee becomes arthritic, there can be significant joint surface damage. Cartilage can break away and one bone may start to grind into another. This can cause a lot of pain, which typically limits the ability to walk, climb a flight of stairs, sleep at night, or do anything particularly physical. That may sound quite familiar to you. It doesn't matter that we're all different. If you score your pain eight or nine out of 10, and it's there most of the time and constantly interfering with your quality of life, then if your knee is arthritic, it may well be that you should start to think about knee replacement surgery. If, however, your knee is bothering you, but is manageable with a score more like five or six out of 10, then now is probably not the right time to consider knee replacement. Perhaps you can go for a walk and it just aches a bit afterwards. You can still go up and down stairs relatively normally, perhaps a little bit slower, and you haven't yet tried painkillers on a regular basis. The question on the mind of most patients when deciding whether or not to have a knee replacement is, how much pain improvement can I expect? Will I be pain free? Well, if you're lucky, all that pain will go, but that happens in only about 20% of patients. Your pain is highly likely to improve, but it's more than likely that you will still have some discomfort afterwards, although it will feel significantly better. What about night pain? One of the main reasons for knee replacement surgery is the pain that keeps patients awake at night, perhaps causing you to wake many times throughout the night or get very little sleep. After knee replacement, it's likely you will be able to sleep through the night without waking due to pain. If you have a knee replacement, it's unlikely that your new knee will feel completely normal because we have to remove ligaments and soft tissue during the operation. It will almost certainly feel and behave differently when an artificial joint is in place. It is also quite normal for you to get a sensation of clicking as the plastic and metal parts of the joint move and touch. As long as your surgeon remembers to mention this, it shouldn't worry you. Your artificial knee won't feel 100% stable, probably just a little unstable. Not as though it's going to give way, but just not like a normal knee. This happens in a significant proportion of patients. Prior to knee replacement, many patients have the sensation that their natural knee is going to let them down and give way. That's because it hurts, and those pain signals switch off the muscles around the knee, which then feels like it might, or does indeed, give way. Following knee replacement, such knees are likely to feel much more stable. Most patients these days find they can fully straighten their new knee and can bend their knee up behind them to a very great extent. It may be you'll be able to walk as far as you like and over rough ground without any issues at all, but the chance of that happening is probably only about 20%. Perhaps you want to know if you can get back to playing sport, and if so, what kind of sport? We consider a knee replacement a success when a golfer can get round a golf course. Now, not obviously, everyone plays golf. In fact, very few of our patients do, but it gives you an idea of what level of activity we expect. You can use a cross trainer, a rowing machine, or an exercise bike. You can swim, but we advise crawl, not breaststroke. Slow social doubles tennis is possible, 
Gentle skiing for a week or two may be okay, but not hard skiing. You won't be able to run, and even if you feel as though you can, you most certainly shouldn't. Returning now to ordinary day-to-day -day living activities, like going up and down stairs. Once you've had your knee replacement, you may be able to go up and down stairs completely normally, but it's likely you'll just feel a little unsteady and will want to hold on a bit to the stair rail. Let's now look at the typical recovery progress of patients after knee replacements. In terms of getting over the procedure, the first few weeks are quite uncomfortable. When you wake up after the surgery, your knee is covered in bandages, which are taken down the next day. We get you up and exercising with the physios very quickly. You're not allowed to leave hospital until you're safe. That means you can walk with your crutches, go up and down a flight of stairs, manage to get to the loo. With modern techniques, we can usually get patients up and out of hospital three to four days after their surgery. Whereas not that long ago, they frequently stayed more than a week. Once you're at home, there is a fair amount of discomfort, but this is well managed with the pain relief you will be given. You take this both during the day and at night to help you sleep. By the sixth week, the exercises you've been doing will probably have made the knee strong enough for you to begin to really enjoy your knee, so that you'll be able to get out, start driving, and start thinking about being more active, going to the shops, and living life in a normal fashion. By three months, the knee's really beginning to settle down. In some people, it takes longer and you have to give it six or even 12 months of slow improvement before you have an idea as to whether the replacement has been a success or not. So if you're one of those very unlucky people that is stiff and uncomfortable for the first period in the rehabilitation, don't give up hope. It may be that it will take six to 12 months for your knee replacement to fully settle down. So now, to summarize, we do a lot of knee replacement surgery. We have a lot of very happy patients with some excellent outcomes, but it's important to know that we also have failures. About five to 7% of patients report that their knee problems are a little or a lot worse after the operation, with a further 5% saying it's about the same. Pain is the main indication for the surgery and if you're in severe pain, consider it. If your pain is manageable, or you'd like to look at other options, or you haven't tried pain relieving tablets, you must go down this route first. Think about a steroid injection prior to considering a knee replacement. You can discuss this with your GP or at the hospital. When your GP first refers you to the hospital to discuss the possibilities of a knee replacement, you'll be with us for 15 to 20 minutes before finally deciding whether a knee replacement is a good option for you. Think carefully about everything you've been told and look at other resources on the internet to do some further research of your own. If you do have a knee replacement, don't expect a normal knee afterwards. Don't expect complete pain relief. The vast majority of patients continue to have some discomfort, some instability, and as they put it, the knee just doesn't feel quite normal or right. So you really have to manage your own expectations by properly understanding what a knee replacement can and can't give you. Then if you do decide to go ahead, you'll be much more likely to fall into the happy group that we talked about. We'd like to thank you for taking part in this program and hope you found it helpful. If you have any questions or comments on how it might be improved, we'd be grateful for your feedback. Your information will help us develop this program so that it becomes a better resource for patients.